Having an uninsulated wall is a very common problem in many homes. You're about to see a two-part video which will show you the best techniques for using slow-rise foam to attack this dilemma, as well as what happens in a real wall. The best way to insulate with spray foam is in an exposed wall cavity. Blind filling can be tricky because every wall is different structurally and internally, but with patience and care, you'll be well on your way to a more comfortable and energy efficient home. Some of the equipment that can help you with a project like this includes a drill with a hole saw, a stud finder, electrical tape, and 7 16 by 5 16 tubing. The tubing should be cut into three foot lengths. Keep in mind the foam will cure in the tube just like it does in the nozzle, so you may need one tube for every hole. The threaded portion of the mixing nozzle should fit snugly inside of the tubing. Use the electrical tape to make sure that the nozzle does not come away from the tubing. Use the stud finder to make sure you are drilling between the studs, but also to look for horizontal studs or cross braces that would block the foam. Drill your first hole approximately 3 feet from the bottom of the wall. Put your second hole at about 6 feet, and your final hole should go as close to the top of the wall as possible. Now just feed the tube into your first hole, trying to get it all the way down to the bottom of the wall. Slowly squeeze the trigger on the gun and you are spraying foam. Working the hose in a side-to-side -side motion, keep in mind the amount of uncured foam you spray will rise over three minutes to about six times its original volume. Waiting for your bottom sections to fully cure before putting more foam on top will help you get that great airtight seal. Sometimes tapping or knocking on the wall will help you determine the level of the foam inside the wall. And remember, placing your final hole as close to the top of the wall as possible will better your chances of getting full coverage. See how well the foam expands into the corners? That airtight seal is stopping air infiltration and energy loss. As you can see, there may be a bit of a mess when the foam comes out of the holes, some sticking to the wall, but cured foam is easy to shave and sand before you patch and repaint. Use extra care in cavities with outlets or light switches. Remember, the foam will do a great job of expanding into any unsealed area and never use foam over knob and tube wiring. Keep in mind that foam of any type cannot be in junction boxes for building code reasons. Because you likely won't be able to see the cured foam, it can be difficult to get full coverage. Things like thin wallboard or poorly installed wallboard can contribute to the chances of the wall bowing out or even cracking, but you can strengthen the wall by adding additional screws. Your finished results will depend on many factors including your accuracy and the amount you fill, if anything in the wall is obstructing the foam, and the structural integrity of the wall itself. 
Now that you've seen the best techniques for using slow rise foam in an uninsulated wall, you're one step closer to waving goodbye to high cost heating and cooling bills and saying hello to an airtight, energy efficient, and more comfortable home.